in the lane matchup. But as a team, Samsung picks so much crowd control, so much AOE, it's very hard to play split pushes into this type of composition, right? You're, you're engaging into Malzahar and AOE cannon stuns, and, and Samsung were able to play their later 5v5 game uh, like we expected them to look for. And let's say we're setting up for the 5v5 style as well. Janna conspicuously left up right now as a pretty priority support pick right now. We're waiting to see what Samsung Galaxy does with their new bands because Longju drop their Janna ban, drop their Cho'Gath ban. There's the Janna ban on the other side for this one. That means that Lulu was up from before and Cho'Gath's up from before. Lulu Varus, a very possible duo lane here for Longjo. I want to draw your attention to the Malzahar ban, though. The Malzahar pick on the side of Samsung ended up forcing Longju away from a facilitator mid lane, a mid laner with a global. I think Rise would have been a heavy consideration for them. Went for the lane, and certainly the lane focus worked in the early game, but they didn't have that extra oomph to guarantee that Khan could get ahead. He had to blind pick the jacks from there. It went away from him in this game, getting rid of someone who is a blocker to some of those roaming champions can be used against Talia, most famously against the Galio, and also the particular pick of the Rise will give Longju a couple more options to get BDD ahead because he's the one most likely to end up with the counter pick on the side of Longju. And right now, Samsung Galaxy can pick almost exactly the same team composition here with the Tristana and Sejuani still being picked like the last time as Longju rushing through there as the Jarvan grabbed up and the Varus pretty early on as well. And then this time around, I feel more inclined towards Longju giving this Jarvan to Khan on the top side because this is a champion where he can build tanky in the later phases of the game. You know, he can be on the front lines as a stone play and fight a little bit more standard in that front to back, plus a little bit more standard this time around. Obviously, as long as you do have Lulu there for the Ardent Sensor. Look at this, more differences coming through here. They had the option of playing the same Rakan as last game, playing the exact same bot lane. Instead, they want to play the Terra here into this one. Of course, a great team fight tank out of support role as well. That area of, of effect and vulnerability, huge for those five on fives. I mean, Samsung has the same read, uh, read that we did. All right, Longju, you tried the split push, you tried the jacks, go more towards the team fighting. They take the Tarek, one of the best team fighting supports. Sejuani as a premier front line. You see the rise will already be banned. So this Malzahar rise tug of war that was won by Samsung, blinding the Malzahar and preventing the rise from really being a realistic pick is once again happening in the series. Let's see what happens here. This one, Cassiopeia adding to the mid lane ban pools as BDD gonna hope that he can get himself an advantageous mid lane matchup and that flex Jarvan can work out in the end. Krag is still off the table, of course, again, a jungle ban out from Samsung Galaxy expecting that Jarvan to go top. And it's that eerie feeling I had before this series when I talked about Samsung's preparation. It feels like they are suddenly that one inch ahead in terms of where Longju wants to go. It does feel like Khan will be taking the top lane Jarvan in this game. Talia is also a big pick for Crown, who brought it back into the meta after the nerfs took it out of Worlds 2016. And he'll actually be the one blinding it in this game. Yeah, we'll see if he's actually able to gain any sort of space to roam again, though. You know, Ambition is back on the Sejuani, and we'll see what Cuz has in store for him, because it looks like it'll again be the Jarvan in the Sejuani matchup, as the Cho'Gath is locked in for Khan. I'm hoping to get rid of some of the, the frontline tanks, but of course, Maokai and, and that ilk is still available if they want to. But Shen, of course, another one of the big top lane tanks, so it will be very durable top laners, pretty durable. Looks like Cinderhook jungler's here as well. The Orianna and Tilly going to be a new twist in this matchup. Shen pairs so well with Talia. Both solo laners this time around very well equipped for Samsung to play around that bottom side, to start that roaming game. That's Khan's first professional game on the Cho'Gath. Do note, they will have lane priority in top and bot, and mid lane does start to equalize out as well as the laning phase goes out. So this is one of those traditional drafts from Longju, but with different champions. It's not the ultra comfort on top lane, especially BDD, when it's not the Talia, when it's not the Galio. His next default has been Orya. And Cuba here with the Shen, early on, getting the pass-through damage on Cho'Gath. Uh, you can get some really good trades. It's all about, can the Cho'Gath actually get up to the minion wave you know, to utilize the passive and heal back up. And again, the junglers were watching so close for how they're going to affect those early lane matchups. Yeah, jungler is certainly a big deal in this series. It went contrary to what we expected coming into this one, where Ambition had been toothless entirely in the early game. This time around, though, had gotten two successful ganks off, got kills on both of them, and really kept a lot of that early game pressure alive because uh, Longju were kind of winning almost all of their lanes, got that first turret gold, the game still remained close. See if Samsung Galaxy can once again hold on. This time around, though, the composition's much more similar. There are 5v5 fights on both these sides. Lulu Vera versus Tarek Tristana. 
personally, I'd give a lot of edge to Tristana having more damage in the late game team fights. We'll have to see just how Prey can do it because he is absolutely one of the <laughs> world's best, especially on a signature Varus. Always hurts the 80s damage uh, numbers a little bit as well if they're playing against the Spirit's Refuge. And blocks out uh, key auto attacks during those team fights, but Prey, especially on the Varus, did have that 1500 DPS game. It was absolutely insane. Yep. It was definitely playing against two health stacking tanks, which right. Varus and all his percent hit. Ru Ruin really thing against Stone into? Plate. A little unfair for damage numbers. That's all. That's pretty biased, but we are into this one. Prey oh. going to find some opponents. First time we've seen Samsung with this lineup go for anything other than a full five man point defense. So Samsung already showing kind of adaptation that was on play in game one. Invading here, and for Longju, it does feel like the mid game is really their refuge to actually find a big advantage. In the early game, it's going to be a bit of a struggle when the globals are online to actually make the sort of tempo plays, the invasion plays, the proactive plays that Longju are known for because there is a lot of those global abilities. In the ultra late game, I really can't look past Tristana Tarek as just being oppressive in a true 5v5 fight. So it feels like the breakpoints here for Longju are pretty narrow. Doesn't mean they can't do it, but they would not want to fall into two games on the blue side, two defeats, and already require a reverse sweep for their world's life. But that's actually on the plate right here. Now getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, of course, it's the beginning of the game. Minions have just spawned, and it all comes down to execution more often than not here. Red buff start for Cousin Jarvan here on the bot side. His third Jarvan game, really, of his entire career. He's almost always given that champion over to Khan of the top lane. Not the case, of course, here in this series. Very similar sort of starts for Ambition as he started on his top side near his red buff, but yeah, it's going to be a multi-camp clear. He started out Talisman, and it's going to be part of the Raptors into Wolves into maybe his blue. Ambition throwing up his pathing, and Samsung also getting deep vision and knowing where Kuz started, something they hadn't been doing in previous series. So we keep mentioning this laundry list of things Samsung needs to work on. The laundry list is getting shorter as they continue to adapt. Maybe some big plays to be required out of Wangju. Speaking of which, throughout this weekend, make sure to add hashtag World's Big Plays the moments that make you take to Twitter. We'll be on the lookout so you can share your tweets with us throughout the knockout stage. We'll show off how acute you are at seeing the big plays here in this one as the bot lane starts the battle. And it's an early push, actually, for Samsung Galaxy. Meanwhile, Cuz gets the early scuttle crab. Double buff right into securing some vision around that top side for Khan on his Cho'Gath. Playing fairly defensive right now, just going to let Cuvee push into him a little bit. They have no eyes on Ambition. And if Togath loses his flash, so, so easy uh, for repeat ganks. And we've seen a lot of Togath actually even get camped early on and focused and kind of give away so much pressure in that early game because of overextending it. Like. That's why so much effort from Longju was put around setting up the top lane scuttle crab, getting the coverage vision to allow Longju to just push away. That's why also Prey and Gorilla were pretty much on the back foot and bot side. I think Khan control the lane top side by largely having Kuz around there. The good way to ensure those early game repeat ganks can't happen for Khan. Got to make sure we keep track of the junglers where they're going. Cuz going to get both scuttles in the first round of the jungle. Ambition level four already, getting everything but the Krugs for himself. And looking at this top side, as we mentioned, Khan's been being pushed in, and that wave's still very far away. So the best Ambition has is a counter jungle, or sorry, a counter gank, as he gets his own Krugs. The rest of his camps are all seen. Cuz right now down a level, though, and down one of the camps. Meanwhile, Prime and Gorilla push up the lane on bottom side as Cuz and over there as well to provide the extra support and vision. They knew the ambition is not on this side uh, due to that Scryer's bloom and all the camps have been cleared out. It's little moments like that that shows the veteran status of Longju. When they had their jungler topside, they were under their turret. The moment they knew for sure that ambition was topside, they were able to push in. Still get by far the least attention of any duo lane here the World Championships, and that lane control is also important to stop that being an Achilles heel for Longshot. And the early game comes through, or sorry, the hyper early game, and it's 100 gold up for Ambition, getting an extra camp out against Kuz, who's in his own jungle just now, as the Scuttle Crab's all despawned and the Vision goes away. But Longshot's still doing good elsewhere, of course. They're bot lane up six, and so far so good for this squad, looking for the 
the victory here as Cuz looks for the mid lane ambition right around him. But Crown is low. Looks for the flash. Knock him gets it. The flash away, but he's still going to go down. The chase in is there. First blood comes through for Cuz, getting revenge against ambition. Crown was very clearly tunnel vision. Did not see the initial EQ come in. The flash to course correct on point as well. And another game where BDD and Co get an early lead. Cuz early visit towards the mid lane, and we'll see what they can do at the this time around because this is Longzhu playing a much more standard team composition for the meta. We talked about. This, this being the team where that is really the outlier, and especially for Khan himself, you know, not playing a lot of these tanks. We'll have to keep an eye on him and see how he continues to play this matchup because the Cho'Gath does, there are some things that are very important in this matchup. You know, having the rupture, keeping vision of the Shen to be able to interrupt, especially the early Stand United that can have huge impact. Um, you definitely have to be able to keep some pressure up there and, and keep that vision while also, as we said, not exposing yourself to those ganks that are fairly easy to set up. And Kobe, it's not often that the team that comes in the favorite, the tournament favorite even, is the one rolling the dice first, but that's what game one represented for long. You're gonna see the first gank. The crown had no idea this was coming. Very nicely capitalized on Clean stuff from Cuz, who, like you mentioned, Freak only started picking up the jungle Jarvan during this tournament when it was a big pick for everyone around the world and the loot weeks leading up. And there's a lot of times where people will say, oh yeah, you know, the flash for the knock up there after your EQ, a lot of times is not worth going for because you don't bring the extra damage with you when you're flashing and you're just getting that CC. But because BDD was so close, they knew that it was for sure follow up there. He can add the damage on Orianna. All they needed was to keep Crown in place for another second there. And the double answer, you could see no hesitation. Yep. They immediately both follow up and then grab that first blood. Carlos Longju is still very much this evolving squad, only one split behind them. Dachi Khan's first professional game on Cho'Gath was never a pick that they looked to. He had very much his own unique champion pool during the course of the group stage. Well, he's very young and all these crazy. No BD splashes down. He's got the cleanse. He's going to wait for the stuff. Here comes the re to the top side. Shot going to find two for this one, but it's still. It's going to be the damage coming across the top and the kill in for Crown in the mid lane. That's going to land. This could be Cuz dropping as well. Two for zero so far to Samsung Galaxy. Con to be stunned up if they want it, but there's no follow through to be had. Still 2 0. A great fight for the red side. Yeah, Longshu had an idea that there was going to be a possible counter gank here around mid lane, but instead of having Khan on the top side to try and interrupt his stand United, they have him come down the river to join and they started out before, or Samsung started out before he could even get close enough to have an impact. So the first Stan United, huge there for Cuve. Samsung are able to right the mid lane ship. They get the kill. Uh, they get two kills actually for themselves and then are able to steal away the second red. Roaming first was Core JJ. He's now with ambition, counter jungling the enemy red as well. So the timing, like you say, Kobe, oh so important. Gain that extra objectives after the trade up. You know, going on to the Cho'Gath for the first time in competitive play, there are those nuances, like where is the right place to be against a Shen? Is it just in his eye line trying to interrupt the Stan United or make the counter rotation? It's other pictures in Khan react first, but much more difficult to predict. Maybe he can recover for himself into this one, 0, zero, zero and down 5 CS right now. Kuwe has definitely had a better game so far early on. One of the best top winners in Korea, flash of a Gorilla, getting away for the possible stun from Ruler. Of course, you're seeing the power of that duo. Easy to push in the Dazzle stun, the crystallized starlight where it needs to go, and looking pretty well for himself. Really respecting the level six that was just pinged. Extra burst there for Ruler. Prey only got it on the back end after a couple minions went down. Oh, bottom lane might get dove here. Remember the last play was around mid lane and Crown didn't have to use his ultimate to get there. Now they're definitely outnumbered. Ulti two kills, they cut him off properly. Here comes the wall. There's nowhere for Longju to go. Ulti pop as well. They're gonna be durable for this one. One kill, make it a second one. The barrier pop means nothing, and the second kill comes in. Two for zero in the bot lane. They didn't even have to mute any damage with the Terek ultimate there, because they had the four to two easy dive for Samsung. Now let's see if they can actually continue to pressure this turret. Doesn't look like there's any defense on the way. And they're playing Longju's game as well. Double control ward, triple control ward now on the bot side. Playing around the bot side, no interest in ganking the Choga, getting the maximum value, two kills, and also the first time. Impressive for Samsung yet again, playing to the team composition here. They're able to press the momentum here in the game after the successful counter around mid lane. Crown, easy ultimate, very nice roam on that Talia early on to really start to open up the map now. Pressure may just continue. 2,000 gold is pretty nice at nine minutes here. Watch this fight again. There's no information at all on the bot side. They've been playing around top side, expecting that Khan would be the recipient of all the gangs. Gorilla only level five at the start. From there, 
academic for Samsung Galaxy. A good pressure out of Crown, of course, getting the, the gank back into the mid lane to give him the pressure after the, the first blood from BDD. Of course, those flashes were down. Smart of ambition to get into that lane, bring down Kuve at the level 6 gen, and those two kills uh, crowned that roam pretty easily, and he made a lot happen in that bot lane here as the power spikes continue to push forward. This gold lead, nothing to smirk at right now for Samsung Galaxy. And again, gold leads are one thing, and item completions are another as well. Not only are Longju in a gold hole right now, but you're about to hit that point where Rageblade is half completed. Your next purchase would have to be a big Blasting one. one. <laughs> you do not want to go back for a small purchase because Blasting One does not give you combat effectiveness, and there's going to be a power trough here in addition to the gold disparity. You know, the power disparity is huge. And that's why Samsung don't go topside and try to get another turret, try to increase the pace of the game and allow answering gold to go to Longju. What you want to do in this scenario is make Prey and Gorilla accountable for as long as possible because they just don't have the items to take standing trades against their opponents. And Shana has the option of staying in lane or just using the BF sword to rotate around. They're doubling down on their advantage. Longju actually being able to get any semblance of control bot side after what happened with the Tilia who can run, with the control wards are already prepared, is difficult. So you're actually ending up denying CS to the Prey and Gorilla, even though it's only 11 minutes into the game. You see right now, life is difficult for this duo lane. Not a lot of wards in that jungle. There is one that spots the Sejuani moving down, so they know what's going on. And as you're seeing, Gorilla playing very far back as a result, kind of Prey the same, but it allows the wave to push into that tier two turret. There's always that threat of a mission coming down. Crown the same. And this, again, should be spotted to a certain extent. The rewards around, but how much can you really do against Ruler here? Yeah, even if they spot it, you know, a Shen State United is available as well, and all you can really do is try and defend at the turrets here for Longju. They're, they're doing their best to clear out some of the vision, but the threat is so, so big here from Samsung. Nice smite. All right, Cuz got something. The little victories, because maybe they won't get the big ones here under this one. So yeah. let's go up the hole. Killer's out a ward. Smites the big chicken away. Woo. Nice secure. Unstoppable. The irony of this game cannot be lost on viewers, though. We're seeing Samsung use the same sword. In fact, stab Longju with the sword they've been wielding for the better part of the summer season into Worlds, playing the same sort of style. The Tilia certainly one of the big comps that Longju default over to. Longju now adapting more of the meta, going for the Cho'Gath, and Samsung executing in a way that they never really were able to in the group stage. There's been nothing for but praise for all of the players on Longview from every other player at the Worlds Tournament about how good they are at their position and how little they could do against this team. But Samsung are just swinging away here, back-to-back -back games, and this one looks very good for them as well. And Longju fall behind with these Rage Blade carries. They largely like to keep a four-man group and have praise solo down a minion way, just queuing them, just farming to get to the Rage Blade spike. That blasting one, everyone yep. who plays AD carry shakes their head, knows how bad that feels for now. They still can't look for standing DPS trades unless they know for sure the enemy AD carry is going to be out of it. They'll be low on that. Ooh, the knockout actually gets them through it. The polymorph there as well. Shock provides even more time, and the kill does come in. The layer crowd control. I don't know if Ruler had the chance to flash, but it never did hit the ability. And now Rift there, if it doesn't run out of patience, it does, though. Say no more, Papa Smithy. He is out of it. Ruler is dead. Flash and barrier are available, but he just got CC'd from 100% to zero almost. Not a bit like week one ruler where he was really struggling to have those late game impacts, picked it up for week two, but dying with everything available. It seemed like an impossibility. Could have said the same about some of Longju's yeah. decision making in but game one. Especially the barrier, barrier right? You can cast at all times. Because if the, if you buy a little bit more time with the Sand United coming in, you know. Sends there, maybe he can get the dodges, yeah, but. Either way, it did land well for Longju, so something to go back into this one still. 1,500 gold to come back from as we watch this one more time. Maybe he didn't think uh, he needed it, but here we go. They get the in interrupt initially, and then Gorilla immediately polymorphs him afterwards. Shockwave Wild is able to well, get yeah. that. That was actually a surprising amount of burst damage to put out there. It looked like 400 HP, and then he was dead, so still no excuses. Could have gone for the earlier barrier. But taken down, and look what's completed. Rage Blade out of nowhere for the side of Prey. They also have already completed the Ardent Sensor. So when it comes to standing damage trades, the game kind of takes a left turn that wasn't on the cards until Roller made that critical solo mistake. An important power spike certainly for Varus, and it's a really nice linear growth here. Hurricane's great to buy a blade of the Rune King. You expect against triple melee. 
uh, you know, especially tank melee, he's going to get plenty of damage out of that one. So Frey's going to be pretty happy skilling throughout the rest of this one. Art Scepter done on both these sides as well, of course. And uh, yeah, I think Longju have kind of crusted over some of the, the really difficult parts of this game and can look quite a bit better. We're going to see if they can keep this one going as the fight for the blue buff is in, but it's in Fog of War. Can't quite get that one. No slow to land thanks to Frost Armor, and blue will be handed over to BDD. Gets that cleanly enough. Ooh, they cut him off, actually. Gives it a little bit of extra free time to Ruler, but only gets a few auto attacks off. Pulls Dagger with the Satchel Charge, and a half HP turret as long as he looks for back. A little bit more prey. Won't pull the ultimate. Rock Jump would be there in time. Again, when you look at the bottom lane, uh, it's, it's not that big of an issue because if they're both close to each other, they cannot join these fights. Yes, the teleports are available, but uh, both of them can interrupt each other. So both of these four-man squads uh, defending very aggressively here. And as you said, the, the Rift Herald is available for Longzhu if they really want to push it. Well, they're cheeky at all. Half health turret would go down. A little bit of a stun. Now Khan's got to be careful getting away with it. Does not get pushed back, but he's got to watch out for taunt range. Looks he's going to kite them back and stay alive as BDD was coming over to save his life. Cuz nearby as well, meaning a soon 3v2 means no more fights to be had. I often see the smooth moves from the Troga, but able to walk away there and not even have to use his flash. Top lane tug of war, kind of being all around the vision control. Long as you're being able to establish the two control wards around their blue buff, have been able to actually push up and equalize lane pressure with Samsung, despite how the early game went and the globals available samsung they know the weave as well of course some cooldown for a little bit longer so the pace slowing down a little bit yeah. given how things started is uh, the first part of a multi-part process to bring longju back into the game. it is just so strange you talked about the how backwards this game feels with samsung galaxy winning early longju saying all right, we'll actually play for team fights and not the 4 1. We're hoping to scale to light and ruin. Got a face check in the fray. A lot of damage coming across. Duke's away from the stun, but this could be enough for Gorilla to drop down. Look for a bit more. And there's Dealing coming across. There's no way for Prey to get any more damage in. As the rest of the team joins in as well. Cuts quite low. The flash backwards. A nice knock at the bias of time. In the wall, Weaver's wall won't quite find the rest of the team, but it is BDD isolated. Coming in by himself 1v4 and flashes just to get himself killed regardless. 1 0 Samsung. He did not have the lane priority for BDD to walk straight down. He's pincered by Crown and taken down even if the 4v4 fight was so even it's now not 4v4 Ooh, a drop comes in though kill through for khan getting one for himself but the trade back is cuz gonna lose his life a nice little bit of damage out of kuve shen one for one on the bot side still though it means lane pressure for samsung galaxy in this top turret to fall exactly samsung still with the extra man advantage here and they will claim this objective afterwards can i just say that we should have all fights start with 80 carries walking point blank into each other sure, okay makes the beginning extremely exciting there and we did get to see again samsung with the ability to join the fight faster. Crown came in here on the Talia, and then as you said, the kill that goes over is BDD walking up the river here on the Oriana in the flank. Own weapons being used against him in a knockout best of five. We see the replay, Ruler's called to return to lane because he has ambition and day around. First, not massive, not enough there. You see the Cosmic Gradients come down, but it's all about the minimap here with the mid lane is joined. Exactly, look at the minimap. BDD is walking up the river, but Talia gets to make up that entire distance and all of a sudden you're left on the wrong side there yeah, and he almost got over the wall couldn't quite do it only got over weavers not the actual summoners rift one so stuck on the wrong side of that corner too bad it was close and of course the re-engage a lot of first damage out of ambition we'll take him down first removes any oh, the front line pressure here but ends up being one for one and we already knew the minion wave was supporting samsung picking up two turrets to zero so far in this game Really pretty safe on that one. Gets the rocket jump in time to get out of the rupture from Khan, but Mountain Drake alive. And with Ruler on the other side of the map, this could be a little bit of something. Kube has teleport, though, if he wants to join this fight, or he might give it away. Again, yeah, Longzhu are on a timer here. Both side lanes pushing for Samsung. They could collapse at any moment here. Teleport starting to channel for Shen. Crown backside. Oh, it's going to be a pickup there for the blue team. And here comes the giant of vulnerability. The first kill coming to Ruler already for Crown. One for zero, and Khan's going to drop, making it a second one. And it's going to be a giant stop to the backside. This could be everything they need. Shock to buy a few seconds. But it doesn't matter. A triple go coming across. Two actually back in, but Khan not going to lose his life. BDD, the last one to remain here, but he's in a one versus three, and Crown gonna have the damage. King me, a quadra kill for Samsung's mid laner. Samsung are setting the pace of this game, the tempo of this game. They decide to fight. Prey does not have the two items he traditionally does have because Longshu are the ones deciding when to fight traditionally. Tradition's gone. Opposite day is here, and Samsung Galaxy are careening through mid. Yeah, the game just cracked wide open here for Samsung. They're able to get 
tremendous amount of pressure with two turrets in mid lane, huge minion wave pushed into the bottom lane, able to clean so much off of the map after this. And we know Samsung Galaxy has this power. They had this run themselves in the last split, or last year. We'll see this fight again first, though. ADD once again is separated from his team. Look at him, hopelessly walk forwards and back, forwards and back. Doesn't even have flash to try to go for an aggressive flash over the wall. He was getting auto attacks up, but unfortunately it was a Sejuani or an altered Cosmic Radiance target. He could do nothing. There have been so many questions for Crown with his summer performance in the LCK very much lacking. You know, which, which crown will we see here at the World Championships? How much are we going to get out of crown on this stage? And he's definitely showing up here. Huge plays for him so far. And as much applause from Samsung themselves as the audience here in Guangzhou. Again, I want to bring up the point I did before the rudely interrupting replay showed up here. Samsung Galaxy, last year around this time, put their new roster together. Beginning of summer split, crown got the start. Core JJ and the rest of the squad all lined up here. And they made it to the World Finals. Almost out of nowhere, they were a top four finisher in the LCK, and they made that beautiful run. And in spring, Crown was the MVP. It seemed like they would keep it going. They'd be such a strong team, but Summer has started lacking. Crown himself started being overlooked. BDD was then the MVP of the Summer Split, and Longju is the new hotness. And looks like Samsung Galaxy looking to reclaim that crown. If you guys remember the opening day tease in the week one of groups, week two of groups, a lot of people were saying, we got to Worlds. This is the place. What happened before doesn't matter. And I think when people looked at this game, they felt the same way. They were like, there was a regular season. There was a spring and a summer. But think about this tournament. Longju's been on a tear, and Samsung have looked weak. But again, this is Longju versus Samsung. It's a Korea versus Korea match. It is an extension of what happened in the summer season. So actually coming in here, you can see that actually the earlier tournament meta has been turned on its head, and Samsung can play proactive as well as Longju. And even last year at Worlds, in Korea versus Korea, best of five, people did not expect Samsung to push SKT far at all. Yet yeah. we got five games in that series. And here, at least we're going to get that. Samsung don't want to even let Longju have that many. And it's been a pretty remarkable run. I know a lot of people coming in saying, ah, why doesn't KT Rolster here? Samsung Galaxy, they look like pushovers this one, but they won that regional final match to get the spot. And now up against the toughest competition you could probably have at Worlds, the undefeated Longju up until now, looking very solid. They won game one, game two looking good as well. Six and a half thousand gold up in 20 minutes is a sizable advantage. Looking to close it out to be a 2-0 start for the best of five. Wherever Core JJ is, very difficult for Long to do anything because you can just pop the Cosmic Radiance if the team is grouped. Talia will rotate first. Shen will rotate first over the Cho'Gath. Basically, wherever Samsung goes, you can see Long to go in one way, and that's defensively. And basically, the whole map, especially the Baron side, is controlled by Samsung. Samsung's comp is so difficult to deal with for Longju at this point because Samsung have so many tools to start out the fights. And then, as you mentioned so many times here with the Tarek, they have the, the tools as well to ensure that they can survive the duration of oh, yeah. that fight. Makes it very difficult for Longju to try and navigate those big ultimates. They're definitely an exceptional Baron support here. AOE, uh, Arden sensors. Even on the, the tanks and the mages actually can make quite use out of the auto attacks. Uh, Ambition taking away the wolf camp here, getting more and more farm away from Kuz. Khan, ulti grabs himself the red buff, no chance. How many times do we have to see Samsung push in, contest, push up vision, and then go back to the Baron that we know there's been no ability for Longshu to ward before they use the other thing Tarek can do so well. We see it this time, they're very fast Baron power, and Longshu understandably are on the back foot and slow. Teleport coming in, but the Weaver's oh, ball yeah. prevents it. Cuz gonna try, he can ult, he can flash, but it's half HP. Does one get knocked back, but does get stunned up. Here's the ulti pop, this could be the team fight. Samsung not quite able to kill Cuz, and this is the Tarek ulti down. Oh. Kata does have a bit early shot, but going to find the front line that is not major damage. Don't play pops here by Khan, staying alive a bit longer, finds the silence, push back into the team, watch out for Prey. Down a half HP from a crit out of Ruler, this will be a disengage. What a close, close skirmish right there. Timing a little bit off, but in the end, nobody going down, and Longzhu did stop the Baron. So at that objective completed, even though it cost them the Cho'Gath teleport. See? Trying again. Stun on the Cho'Gath, they're gonna walk forward. Prey at half HP, no easy way into the fight. Flashes up on everyone but Cuz here. 
background, waiting around the wide. Samsung trying to bait for the Stan United engage there. They had QV in base, waiting to pull the trigger, but Longju again, do not step out of line. And Samsung, just like game one, eventually became a game of chicken around the Baron with the Malzahar. They can just have ambition, start Baron, peel off, Warmog's healing comes out, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, and wait for that colossal mistake that we did see a couple of times in the first series. So the Baron focus worked in game one, so far doing fine, but do note, Second item completed by Prey, but it is not the Hurricane. It's not for the AoE. He's trying to buff up the damage and hope maybe some Magic Resist Shred will help out the Orianna Shockwave. Magic Resist itself, of course, pretty useful against Talia, but this is not, I would say, the best teamfight item you could go for here. AoE Ardent Sensor is just so strong, and all the on-hit damage from Rage played the same. And we'll see if it pays off, but I am not looking positively on Prey's single target damage output. If that's a huge effect or not, yeah. A lot, a lot of times when judging the AD carry buys and and the the pros of Wits End to me are almost always focused on heavily on the defense part and the magic dam magic resistance that you're getting with it. So we'll see if if he's able to survive and by small margins and and the magic damage threats are definitely there on Longju or I mean on Samsung sure. to threaten him. And Prey has had success with these you know half offensive, half defensive builds before. We'll see if uh, this one's actually going to be a breaker because Samsung has so much control and they're starting up Baron yet again. Again, the attempts. We could use that's now on cooldown. 8,000 health left from the Baron. They're going to peel off as Cordon Day goes at about half HP. Weaver's Wall looking to the engage and they found the stun. Looking for the flashback. Craig going to stay alive because he's going to lose his life. One for zero on this. The re engage in, and they're going to get the second one. Godlike as Crown continues. 100% kill for the patient. 13 kills in in 26 minutes. It's so easy for Samsung. There's no teleport on Khan. And of course, Stan United and teleport available from Samsung. This time they got the turn they wanted. One member goes down. They go over stomp through with the Tristana. And it's turned back onto the Baron. The biggest difference is that we always talk about teams successfully using Terran and teams failing with it is that you have to have forms of foul control to force the fights and ensure the engagements during the invulnerability. Samsung just forced this so hard immediately as soon as long as you come down the river to face check. Ambition is in there. Stan United on top of them to Leo Wall, and there's no fighting back. And Cho'Gath is slowly walking. There's nothing he can do. The fight is over before he even comes into the picture. Maybe buys Gorilla a couple more seconds of life. You're right, Kobe. They may have Oriana and Jarvan, which sounds like an initiation combo. It's not going to be threatening the backline. It's not going to be able to get big damage there. And Prey, to me, probably went wit's end because they're not going to choose when a fight starts. He's probably going to dump a lot of Hurricane Bolts into the Cosmic Radiance. He's just trying to survive. Do that, but it's going to be pretty difficult. The gold lead, almost 10,000 right now. A 25% gold lead nearly for Samsung Galaxy. Things he down the line. Every single member has more items, more levels, more gold, more everything. As another turret's going to fall right here, making it over 10k now. 10.5, Samsung Galaxy poised to make it a 2-0 start against almost every single expectation. Longju looking completely out of sorts here against Samsung. And the, the questions are already arising of how will they be able to recover in this series, if at all, after such a, a strong showing here in game number two for Samsung as they continue to pressure. Yeah, more and more damage coming across. Continue wave for this sort of half HP. Another engage in the top side. 2v1 against Kuba. He's got flash though if he needs it. The silence has already worn off. He's not going to go across the wall just yet. There he does. And gets away from Cataclysm. Burns nothing important. No idea how that was expected to work. He was holding onto his cooldown. Still has flash available as well. That's mean they're outnumbered on the bot side as well. Continue. Shockwave not going to go quite the right time. Proper buffering from Ruler. Casts it late enough. The Shockwave lands and then Rocket Jump comes through. I messed a couple of those up, so we'll complement yeah. Ruler that time actually getting the priority right. Brown happily going side lane. Khan hasn't been able to itemize too further into anything real. Inch backs away. Samson continue to try and use the Baron buff on all three lanes, pushing in these minions and chipping away at the turrets. Here comes the Weaver's Wall to help out with some isolated damage on mid. Locks out BDD, and that means bot turret's gonna fall mid lane. Sure to drop as well. The damage is in. Two more turrets have fallen. 15,000 almost to lead the sun comes across. This could be the fight that closes the game. A knock up there, but no one's gonna fall. It's only Prey dropping and ruler safe on the back side. The chase continues to stun the lane on a cause. This Jarvan could be losing his life. He's gonna stay alive a little bit longer. Ambition can't quite find the knock up, but a 5v4 is the team free engages. Botland inhibitor to fall. Cuz forced to retreat. Khan unable to do anything in the front line. A flash actually out. They were afraid of dying to Crown's damage output. 
14 to 5, under 30 minutes. A stomp of a game so far for Samsung Galaxy. They have pulled in Khan. He can't survive, and maybe he can. As he's going to limp away and stay up there with the chase into BDD. A little bit more as Cuz going to fall. The second one to drop is Gorilla. And a nice knockback by Crowd. Looking for another quadra. Not yet going to have it, though. BDD staying alive in the back lines. And it just simply doesn't matter. Two versus five. Samsung Galaxy will not be stopped. Crowd. Perfect kill for the patient. A sub 30 minute game two win for Samsung Galaxy. Samsung looking so good right now. Game number one, they play as expected. Survive the early game. Team fight to victory. But game number two, they push the tempo. Shen, Talia, roaming, creating these plays for themselves and being able to push that victory so early against Longju, delivering blow after blow. That pressure draft from Samsung honestly made Longju look ordinary after their extraordinary run, winning the LCK in the rookie split of Kaz on the Royal Road was Kaz all the way to the World Final.